Um, so today, objective is basically talk about that, and also we really want to give you time to look at your upcoming lesson outlines and see how can you directly implement what you are learning today. How that's going to help you. We, we really want to focus on that direct application. So let's just go ahead and get started. Um, so we're going to look at this to prepare for adapting and adjusting to the lesson. Um, you're going to think about what exactly coming up in a lesson is going to be a problem with the student, like what common misconceptions they have. So what does it mean to plan for error? Um, you're just going to try to think of in your time today here in class, we're going to think of what exactly are some errors that you're seeing coming up in future lessons. Um, so to make this relevant for your class, I want you to think of next week's lessons. Whatever you might be teaching, the concepts that are going to be talked about. And think specifically about what common errors or misconceptions students have had for those lessons. The plan is at the end of this, you're going to be making sure to incorporate what those errors might be and how you respond to them. So for instance, when you are listing two incorrect answers that you're likely to get, you're going to think about exactly what you're going to say in this class. So for the note catcher, a lot of what we talked about are going to be going in order. <coughs> so I know for the first part, what does it mean to plan for error? I'm sorry, I actually got the last part. I'm going to make sure to review. What does it mean to plan for error? It just means to adapt what exactly is happening in terms of your lesson, to make sure that you're planning for any errors that the students might have and also anticipating what your reactions are going to be. A lot of times, just subconsciously, we make reactions to what a student says, and it might actually hurt their future responses in your class. So we want to make sure that no matter what we do, we're anticipating what the student might say, how can we nurture them to feel like, okay, it's okay to take risks and try to guess based on what we know. So again, just for why we plan for error, to make sure that we're cultivating risk taking that students feel comfortable in our classes. The next part are the three paths for building a culture of error. You can just summarize these points. The first is just to think of three to five important questions that you'll ask in the lesson. So we've already talked about this in our prior PDU, or the prior PDU dealing with checks for understanding. This is building on that. You want to make sure that you're thinking of what exactly you're going to ask to check for understanding. But now you're going to take that and think of what are some common misconceptions that students say. So for instance, in English class, when you talk about symbolism, what are some common misconceptions with symbolism that you want to anticipate and how you will react to it? The third step, of course, is making sure how you respond. What are you saying to that student? Sometimes, to be nice, we miscommunicate to the student and say that it's close, or you're almost there, instead of giving them direct answer. And so instead, in their mind, they're kind of shutting down at that point. <coughs> oh, I got good enough. All right, I'm going to stop right there. So the idea is that by anticipating what they're going to say, what misconceptions are happening, you can make sure that your saying to them <coughs> how to get to the right answer without just shutting them down. Okay, so we have a couple of three notes. At the very bottom, you can see three different slots. All you're going to do is tell me what you notice for how they're building that culture of error. So as you're watching this video, they might not exactly apply to your classroom, but try to ask yourself, what are you noticing in terms of the culture of error when you're watching this video? Thank <laughs> you. 
seconds till I move out. Madison Lane to the main office, please. Madison Lane to the main office. Okay. We're going to move on to the second video just for sake of time. Let's hear people's answer for number two. I suspect there's going to be some disagreement here, so I might hear a couple different people's answers. Okay, do you know that? Oh. Or what? Okay, so I'll do the same one. Before we make a choice, because you circle one, from right, Jamila? Before we pick one of them, I just want to see if you will pick different numbers than those two. Then we pick anything other than those two. Can we pick? Okay, now. For the four answers we have here, A, B, C, and D, I don't want to start by asking which one you think is right, because I want to focus on the explanations that we have. So let me hear what people think of D. I don't care if you think it's right or wrong. I just want to hear what people think for answer D. So we've got 62 divided by 5 equals 1 and 2400. So what people said. Eddie, what did you say about it? So go ahead and write down what you notice for that second video. And because I feel like you're getting the gist of these videos, so you can go ahead and put an X through the third video. We're not going to be doing that today. But make sure that you wrote what you did for, uh, excuse me, please write what you noticed for video one and then for video two. Okay.